Roger, here we are back at Wimbledon, 20 years on from when you won your first ever yeah. Grand Slam. But for the first time, you are no longer a competitor. Mm -hmm. How does it feel? It feels okay now. Uh, last year was hard uh, because I was still trying to play, but uh, struggling with my knees so bad. And, you know, um, uh, last year was the 100 year anniversary of Center Court. And uh, I came back and I got an incredible ovation. Did you know at that point that mm -mm. that was probably going to be the moment? The I mean, I knew it, it could be yeah. because of you know, the, the issues I was facing with the knee. Um, but I remember saying on court that I hope to see you next year. And I truly meant that. Yeah. I didn't talk to anybody about it, really. But eventually, you know, decide where, I'm re where am I going to retire? How, how painful is it going to be or how uh, much of a celebration will it be? And it ended up everything and more for me. I thought it was beautiful and being surrounded by Rafa, Novak, Murray, Borg, McEnroe, Laver, you name it, Edberg, they were all there, my team, my family. Um, so it was, it was a very, very nice end because I was really, truly dreading that moment uh, yeah. on how to go out of the game. Listen, back in 2003, that year signaled the start of something else, not just your Grand Slam mm -hmm. tennis career, but the start of your charity foundation as mm -hmm. well. To date, you have helped 2.5 million children across six countries in Southern Africa and, of course, in Switzerland. And I know you um, recently traveled to Lesotho for the first yeah. time. So that trip obviously was, uh, as any trip um, into the field, is always very special for me. But this one was extra special because it was the first time that all four children could join, my wife and my mom as well. So we had the best time. Uh, we were there for three, four days. Um, traveling through Lesotho, a, a country I've never been to before. Um, it's also the last country that uh, has been part of our countries that we support, you know, in early childhood education. Um, they're part since 2020. So when we got there, for me, it was more, less a trip for me, but more for me, a trip for the kids, right? So it was more catered towards them so they could play with the kids at the, uh, you know, at the schools and run around and play catch and you know play with a ball and read to one another and it was so much fun honestly to see this as a dad and hoping that uh, I can spark the fire for you know um, for charitable work in my for my children I think was very special so it was a, a great trip. Obviously you played tennis with the children mm -hmm. you were sitting in the courtyard reading them books but you were also sitting down with the teachers and yep. talking to them about the value of giving children responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very important to be hands on and seeing the confidence grow in them and just to listen that it's actually working what we're trying to implement, you know. And uh, at the end of the day, like you said, you have to give them the power. And it's so nice to hear you talk about your children in that way, because I'm mm -hmm. sure you have had a lot more time with them in the last oh, nine months. Yes. And I hear that all four of them are actually enjoying playing tennis now. They do, uh, yes. Anyone in particular showing Promise? Yeah, I think the boys, as they're younger, uh, I feel like they are more into it. I'm happy that the girls didn't get into it like, uh, like super crazy yet from the get-go. Um, now the boys, on why, the other, why is that? I didn't need my first kids to be tennis players, to be honest. <laughs> and we were traveling, so it was hard to put in the hours. Okay, but now I really start feeling it. Now that they about to turn 14, they want to play more and more and more. So they're starting to play three, four times a week now. So I'm, I'm happy for them and the boys. I can feel they're going to be much more sporty from the beginning, but okay. maybe also because we have a more settled life. So you are coaching three or four times a week? You know, I'm not the coach, I am the dad. <laughs> and the dad's advice, as we know, only goes so far. And uh, it doesn't matter if you've won Wimbledon or not, you're still the dad. <laughs> Do you find that you get stopped on the street just as much by the average fan or are you feeling a bit more anonymous these days? Do you have any anecdotes in the last nine months that sort of tell us where um, I think because I show up in completely different random places nowadays, um, you know, that some people are really surprised and very happy then to all of a sudden see me. I mean, I've had a moment when I did uh, the Orient Express, I was in Venice and a guy chased me down. He was like, ah, oh, can I please take a picture? I'm like, uh, yeah, uh, are you who I think you are? I'm like, no, I don't know who, who you think I am. He was like, hey, are you Nadal? I'm like, I am so sorry, I'm not, you know. So I kept on walking and the guy looked at me and goes, such a pity he's not the doubt. Then, but he kept on looking back and, and I thought he was going to maybe figure it out, but he didn't, you know, so that was a quite a... He missed his moment. He missed his moment. Well, he clearly didn't want a picture with me. One of the pictures was Rafa. But uh, anyway, so I have obviously moments like these. 
Yeah. Or then like yesterday when I went to the, the Coldplay concert, you know. This kind of came out of nowhere and suddenly you're <laughs> up on stage performing on stage. with the band. Yeah. How did that come about? The greatest tennis player of all time, Mr. Roger Federer. And on Saturday night, uh, Chris Martin, he writes to me, he goes like, do you want to come and uh, help us with one of the songs, you know? I'm like, Ugh, really? I don't know, and I was sitting at dinner and uh, I read the message to uh, my wife, my two daughters and some friends. And they're like, oh my God, you got to do it. And Myla, my daughter, looks at me and goes like, Papa, go. You only live once. And I'm like, really? Like, I, I, I should be 50,000 people and I don't even know what I'm going to do. And then I'm like, you know what, Chris, I'm, I'll do it. What do you want me to do? He's like, all you got to do is do the shaker, you know, <laughs> give a beat to the song. So my, I finished my music uh, career on top because I just retired from music as well the last night. What do you enjoy the most about retirement and what do you miss the most about your former life? Funny enough, I don't miss so much being out on court anymore just because I know the body couldn't do it, you know. So I think it's good that I couldn't or I can't, which then lets me watch and follow tennis as a total fan. I think planning ahead and planning quite far ahead for personal moments with my family and friends, I think that's what I enjoy the most. Life's honestly been good and it came gradually, you know, with COVID and my knee issues. I didn't play so much anymore at the end. So actually, I feel like transition was super smooth.